Hello everyone, Graz here once again. These don't come in too often, but we do occasionally get pieces of hardware to review. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Nighthawk Pro Gaming SX10 Gaming Switch. The Switch comes with two 10 gigabit ports as well as eight one gigabit ports, boasting high performance for your gaming needs. This also comes with a gaming dashboard for instant insight and configuration, however you may see fit, as well as customizable LED lights on the Switch that you can go ahead and set up to your choosing. Out of the box, you'll get the SX10 Netgear Switch, the power adapter for it, installation guide, as well as a piece of paper that has your Insight app download where you can pick that up at. The XX10 itself actually has a little bit of heft to it. It's a little bit heavy, but not over the top, and it has a nice, cool look to it as well. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up against my current Switch, and we'll see which one is better. The GS608, it did its job okay. It's an all-purpose router I picked up for 50 bucks at Best Buy, and it got the job done for the most part. Though at some points, there were some bottlenecking between streaming and gaming. So with the SX10, I feel like this would be much different because now I can at least budge it a little bit for different ports and giving priority. Now this is what it looks like once you get out of the box, first thing after it's set up. Of course, the lighting can be changed. This is sitting down in my basement where I have all my wires running down to, and I still gotta do a little bit more work with this setup still, but this was right after setup. Now we'll take a look at the inner workings of the Netgear SX10. This is actually on the switch itself. So once you go to the address, this will give you your information. This will be the place where you can change the coloration of the switch and anything else with it. You can actually see diagnostics. And we'll take a look at that here in just a few seconds. So this is the main page, of course. This gives you an idea of what's been connected already, what the lines are looking like right now. So if they're connected, available, and there's any kind of problems, they'll probably pop up either. So we see four lines are connected, four ports are connected. Cool. We can also see the LED coloration here if we want to go ahead and change it. For instance, the first one, which is hooked up to my PlayStation 4, I can go ahead and turn on or off the activity LED, either or. So let's go ahead and check out the frequency. If you want to change the frequency of it, then if you want to change the coloration. Now keep in mind, I'm using Cat5e, so I'm not going to wind up getting some of these other colors. So I'm probably going to be getting the blue for 1G. Of course, the first two are 10G, so they would actually come up this like lightish purplish kind of color either way. And then we can go all the way down the line. We can set up different colorations for different ports if we so choose. Of course, my streaming, which is a attached network storage. I can go ahead and change that if I need to, but it doesn't really look like it's much different here. And of course, port 10, which they recommend you use for your router. So that connects to the router, which goes to the internet. Boom, done. We can go ahead and change this if we need to. Or we can go in like power saving mode, which some people prefer. That's totally cool. I had it with my previous router, but I don't really care for it because with the previous one, if power saving kicked in and for like I have an extender, once that kicked in, it got really funky with a lot of wireless items and such. So it's like, no, we're not going to go ahead and use that. Let's go ahead and skip out on that. I'm not worried about power saving. Firmware, if you need to update. Reboot switch, if you want to go ahead and reboot it. By the way, if you get the app for your phone, you can actually do this remotely on your cell phone with the app. Really helpful indeed. Product registration, always nice. Switch discovery, if you want things to, of course, be discovered, there you go. You can change your settings on and off. Back your default, if you want to change it back, and password. So we're going to go ahead, and actually you have presets right here if you want to go ahead and change up your switch for certain presets. If you want to give certain ports more priority than others, I'm not too worried about it right now. That may be something down the road. But again, we go back to the home spot. That is what you get for lead. If you want to change anything else up here, of course, you got presets, everything else. Gaming, this gives you an idea of what usage is. And since I haven't used this recently, can I go ahead and, yeah, there we go. You can actually pull up a timetable to see which ports do the most for upload and download. So you can kind of prioritize if you, if you really want. You can actually do some limits over here. So it's like if you want to go ahead and limit this one to like 306 megabits, you can do that if you want to limit on uploads. This is actually really good if you're in a household where it's got a lot of stuff going on and you want to put certain priorities on things. Then again, you're not going to make a lot of friends in the house, but at the same time, if you really want to put priority on these ports, it's up to you. And here, I don't really see too much of a need in this house, but you never know. Things may change and you may want to go ahead and put some limits. So that's pretty cool. You can actually get a graph or like you can actually see a graph over time of different things like five minutes, nothing here. Really haven't done much. Ten, ten hours if you need to see it. Overall, very cool, and it's straight to the point. You can actually, also, if you want to go ahead and like cancel certain things, if you have a bunch of ports going on and you like, well, I only want to see port two, then you can go back and click on these and it'll cancel out. 
and you're only going to get port 2 if port 2 has anything on it. If not, well, you're going to get nothing. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on. Switching, of course, here you go. If you want to go ahead and change up some things, take a look at some things. If you want to have priority, great way to do it. Not doing too much. VLAN, again, no VLANs, multicast. And if you want to set up your lag profiles, which isn't what it sounds like. It's like aggregation groups. It's not lag like, oh my God, my computer's lagging. So, yeah. There's more things you could delve, delve into. This comes with a lot of options, which is really cool. Now, of course, I had more of a base model Netgear router. Switch, I mean. So, yeah. You know, it's to be expected. But this really gives you a lot of options for the money, which is really cool to see. Now, here's my favorite part right here. The cable testing. I never really expected this, which is actually really cool. And it actually checks your cables to see what their status is. Now, again, I've used Cat5e in this house. Or we have cat 5 e in this house. So we're not going to get the most out of the two 10 gig ports. But if anything comes up or there's anything going on, we can actually go ahead and highlight all these. And it'll actually run a test and they'll tell us what's going on or if there's any problems. Now, I never knew it because I used, okay, maybe not the best wire tester. But with this, I was able to go back and see that my line six actually has some crosstalk. Now, for those who don't know what crosstalk is, it's more in line with the cabling. But the result of crosstalk is that you don't get the best transfer rate. So right now, I can see port 6 is not going to be the best transfer rate there. I'll have to go back and fix that issue. But it's really cool that it actually has it in here. That was really unexpected. So as you can see, some of these actually tells you fault from the distance of the switch. So you get an idea of some distance. But yeah, there's port 6. Got some crosstalk. Annoying, but I can fix that. Then the rest, we have everything for the most part is pretty okay. A lot of open slots because I don't have anything plugged into those ports. But overall, very cool to say the least. Next up, we have loop prevention. And again, this prevents any kind of blocked ports in a loop. You can go ahead and turn it on and off. I just kind of leave it as is. Port mirroring, if you need to have anything copied, you know, mirror a port, go, go for it. Port statistics, very helpful if you want to go ahead and monitor what's going on on different ports. Again, we don't have a whole lot going here, so I'm not too worried about this. But I can see... Line 6, or port 6, excuse me, has an error on there, but that's something that needs to be addressed later on. And for the most part, we have our basic stuff as our settings. So I think the diagnostic tool is the really awesome part about this. I didn't expect the cable test, but that's very, very helpful. It also reminds me, I need to get better cabling testing gear, because the cheap stuff is not the way to go. So yeah, very awesome to say the least. I was really impressed by this, and I could see why this would be really cool to have. The suggested retail price of this is $299, and that does sound steep, but for the amount of control and everything you're getting, it still is really good. Again, I feel like more would have been gotten out of it if we had Cat 6 or Cat 6A, but anyway, the ability to actually check out not only the monitoring of the network, but also the ability to control what ports have certain broadband limits is really helpful. Again, that may not actually make you the friendliest person in the household, but at the same time, it is going to help monitor the situation and give you that little burst you may need. Just don't cut into someone's Netflix time because that may cause some issues. Overall, the diagnostics tool in there is extremely helpful. It even picked up on a problem I didn't even know existed from my previous testing. So now I got to go back and get my port six fixed to fix the crosstalk issue. But I would have never noticed that beforehand. My final verdict, I would buy this. I would definitely buy this because yeah, it's a little bit pricey and it may sound steep. By the end of the day though, there's a lot of things you can really do with this. And the diagnostic tool I am absolutely in love with because again, that's gonna help out a lot of issues that you may not even know existed. Or if there's a problem with a network, it's gonna pick up and tell you about. The two 10 gigabit ports are really helpful if you have Cat6 or Cat6A. Again, if you have Cat5B, you're not gonna to notice too much of a difference, but they can make an extreme difference if you got Cat6 or Cat7, whatever. But definitely very good. Being able to change colors, eh, it's negligible, but you know, for some people that may be a thing. I totally get it. Maybe at some point I'll set up my own color scheme, but right about now, I'm just enjoying the quality that it actually provides, which, you know, again, at this price point, it's to be expected and it actually puts through. So maybe at some point I would like to get this and upgrade it with some Cat6 wiring. Then I think you'll see some performance out of it. And they recommend that you definitely put your PC and any other high maintenance device you may have on there, like a PS4, Xbox One, anything else like that. So once again, thank you so much to Netgear for sending this out. The SX10 has been fun to mess with, really. It's been fun to mess with. No, it's actually a really good switch. I would recommend it. 
I would buy it definitely. And you know, what can I say? It's a gaming, it's pro gaming and they mean it. It, it really is pro level stuff. So it definitely met my expectations and the maintenance tool actually exceeded them. So that was really cool. Anyway, keep an eye out for another Netgear product incoming soon as we have a router to look at. This is gonna be fun. So thank you so much. Let me know what you think of this video down below in the comments section. Any comments, questions, or suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to like this video if you found it informative. Be sure to keep an eye out for the next review video coming out, probably within a few days, maybe a week, somewhere in there. But thanks once again to Netgear for their Nighthawk Pro Gaming line of products, which seem to really live up to the hype. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and I will see you again next time. The video's over, but there's more where that came from. Be sure to subscribe for more Terraria Let's Plays, Top 5s, and other videos as well as we cover different titles. You can click on one of the videos here for more. Be sure to rate this video accordingly as it helps the channel out greatly. Have yourself a wonderful day and I will see you again next time.